Snake Man here. Today is that 10th of April 2004. Got out of bed this morning and on my Facebook I had a post. We'll come back to the post in a minute. I'm going to tell you a story about scientific fraud. It starts with me, but I'm not the perpetrator. Here we go. It's the usual sort of stuff. Commit no, no good deed in this uh, world ever goes unpunished. Uh, look, a couple of years last year I published this paper. An updated taxonomy of the alligator snapping turtles, the world's largest snapping turtles. I basically described new species and new subspecies. Subspecies, borderline job. Could have put it as a species. Published here, Australasian Journal of Hepatology. Got all the details there. Anyway, basically, uh, cut a long story short, the science was not really hard to dispute, but I ended up naming Max Hoseri, Macrochilis Max Hoseri, subspecies Muscadine. Anyway, a lot of people think muscadi should have been a full species, so be it. Anyway, there's an abstract, there's an introduction, and when you read the paper, which runs, don't know how many pages it runs, runs a few pages anyway, I think it runs about a dozen pages, the only bit that really matters of, to most people is the description. The species name, of course, is always important, but you have a body in a museum. It's called a holotype. That's part of describing a species. In this case... Specimen in the Florida Museum of Natural History at the University of Florida. Government-owned facility. Anyway, there we go. It's, uh, I'm pretty sure it's government-owned. And what we have here is the details. And that is so that another scientist can go and look at it and uh, decide, yes, that fits the new animal or not. Now, that's Max Hoseri. The other one, of course, is Muscatai. Now, what happened was, papers published and of course we have these enemies who don't want to accept science and certainly don't want to give me any credit for doing any decent work so they tell people not to use the names come up with all sorts of cock and bull excuses now they don't bother arguing the science because the science is pretty hard to argue with we've got dna and morphological evidence backing these names so anyway this comes through the email paul Rowley, one of wolfgang worcester serial fraud sends me this hoser Two one well, sorry, we'll go to his, his email post on, on Facebook. He says, Hose Ray, I was impressed that you were able to describe your Adelin Oscurana Scutilas Adelin Hose, including coloration from a dull looking pickled severed head that you'd never even seen in a museum thousands of miles away. But now it seems you can describe species and subspecies when the holotypes, primary types do not eat, don't even exist. Awesome. That's a pretty full on claim. That is, I have effectively invented species without evidence. Anyway, the key here, of course, there is no holotypes or paratypes, no type animals by which to base the species. Now, the significance, of course, is it's against the, vi the zoological code. <coughs> but this is what come. We have this. It was published. Uh, it come through with it. And you can see it was published here, Magnolia Press, Predatory Journal, Zootaxa. And you've got the publication date. I don't know if it's there, but... Turned out it was published uh, overnight. Anyway, it says, Hoser 2013 attempted to describe a new species, Macrochelis max hoseri, and subspecies M. Tominki sick, Muscatai, in his self-published peer-reviewed, non-peer-reviewed journal. Well, firstly, it was described. There was no attempt made. And secondly, it was peer-reviewed, somewhat with superior quality control to Zootaxa, which we'll come to shortly. Anyway, but he erred in his methods, questionable, in designing holotypes using an online database in lieu of actually examining specimens. Hoser declared specimens UF 155266 and UF 165801 as primary types. However, the Curator of Herpetology at the Field Museum Natural History, whatever it's called, Florida Museum Natural History, indicated that physical specimens bearing either of these numbers have never existed among their holdings. That's a pretty full-on claim. The corresponding records in the FLMNH database referred to unvouched field sightings of Macrochellis in a Nixon personal communication 2013. Hoses, holotypes therefore designated in violation of the ICZN code article 16.4, which says they need a body. They are not based on specimens, ICZN 1999, that's the date of the publication of the code, and his names for Macrochellis are rendered unavailable. They then proceed to rename those species in their paper. So, of course, I saw that thought, wow, that's a pretty full-on sort of claim. And I knew there was no evidence of truth in it, but they've obviously committed some sort of crime. So I had to get to the bottom of this tale of woe. And this is not the first time this bunch of people have done that. But anyway, 
taxonomic assessment of alligator snapping turtles with description of two new species from southeastern United States. Let's go take a step back for a moment there and we go to my paper and mate it looks very very similar doesn't it anyway um so we go back to the zoo taxa paper which is the one of relevant collection of authors and we uh see uh try to read it but of course zoo taxa in violation of the zoological codes ethics or recommendations uh hides their stuff behind a paywall so they give you a taste of what the paper's about uh they did cite me so they we know that uh, uh it's relevant the paragraph that was sent to me via the email I haven't seen, of course, in the paper because I've only got the first and the last pages. But this is the bit that matters. Appendix. Specimens examined. Now, of course, they've made the claim that my animals don't exist. The problem is their western lineage is the original species. Central and eastern lineage are those new species I've named, which one of them they called Swanea. The other one they called something else. Um... We go back uh, a bit, and you can actually... Oh, we don't have the descriptions, but they've given them uh, uh, appellated, whatever it's called, uh, and swaneensis. But we go back to their list of material examined, and you find, for example, under their central division ones, specimen number 155267 from University Florida. So they have actually examined one of my type specimens for the central lineage, that's Muscadi, species. In other words, their claim that the types do not exist is proven false by that very entry. Now, of course, we go down to these other animals, and it's interesting because they've identified that as an animal. Now, it's, we should actually, from here, now that we've already established that the first claim against one of my two species is false, we should be looking at this Swanee ape. Now, I checked the various numbers, and my animals are not listed on that list. So, of course, on the central lineage, my holotype is not listed. That number there is, in fact, uh, the 267 one, is, in fact, a paratype, which is good enough, because if a holotype gets lost, it resorts to paratypes, which is exactly why they are allocated. So, you go down to the uh, relevant part of my paper, where you have the descriptions of the new taxa, you have paratypes for the express reason in case a holotype is in fact lost. Now holotypes have been lost before and that does not prevent the species or its name being recognised. Under the zoological code, the normal process would be to assign a neotype. But more scandalous here, of course, is the claim that in the paper that none of my types ever existed. So we've proven it wrong based on the fact that these people could not even execute a perfect crime and they inadvertently included one of my specimens in their list of material examined. So that's basically mistake number one for them. But of course, let's get back to these online databases where this information comes from. Now these are online databases of holdings in museums. Now we don't need this uh, Facebook post now, but this is what it looks like. This is a screen dump taken from the museum's own website and of course you got the various numbers there and I don't know if any of those actually correspond with any of my types but the results much of a muchness um, uh, I don't I, I have to check my paper but uh, you can see they've got the collection date and all the information uh, about each of the animals none of these are sightings but these are actually animals now of course um, that's their database, but there's another database which is of even greater interest uh, at the moment as we speak. It's called HerpNet, which lists all the holdings of animals in jars in museums. Now, it doesn't list field sightings and stuff. It actually lists animals in jars. And, of course, the institution here, their code in this particular place is FLMNH. And I execute query, and we get a result. Uh, there it goes. It comes up. It shows 150 specimens of this species, uh, as it is known, uh, the American snapping turtle, and of course, normally has preparation type, and previously, they were listed as preserved specimens. They've all been deleted wholesale. Now, you see there's lots of them here. Uh, there's 10, 15 entries per page, all at this particular institution. There's 150 in total on this entire database, which matches what we had on their own website. And for each of them, it says basis of record, 
occurrence. That means they're like turtles swimming in the river, never caught, never seen. Now, we go down here. We're on page one of 10. I'll try to get my mouse in the right place. And we click the button. And we're now on page two of 10. And we have another load here, still showing up as occurrences. And we scroll across, oh, I'm trying to work out which way it goes. There we go, we're on page two of 10. See, there we go, two of 10. Um, and if I scroll it across, we see another collection of occurrences. Now, we go down here and I'll click it for the third page, page three of 10. Now, uh, we go over here to the various numbers and one of them is 156980. Uh, uh, 156980. Now, 156980, I don't think that's one of my types, but if we go back to this uh, Zootaxa paper, we find it here listed. 156980 as being inspected, materials, specimens examined, and yet it is listed on this uh, HerpNet database. Uh, they're all the same, so you don't even worry about where the lines land. You just simply scroll it across, and they're all listed as occurrence. No body occurrence. They are not listed as specimens as they were a year ago. So the database has clearly been tampered with. Now we go to page four of 10, and here we go again. We're on another load of course, and this time around, take a look for 155267, down here somewhere, we found it, there we go. And that one is in fact one of my type specimens, 155267, we go to my paper, uh, not Max Hoser, I think it's the other one, Muscatai. Uh, 155267, paratype, listed as being at this facility. And uh, what happens is we then go down to the uh, database, uh, 155267, and you simply scroll across. Again, you don't have to worry too much about where the lines go because they all show up as occurrence. And previously, uh, a year ago, they showed up as preserved specimen preparation type, as is the case for the other ones. Now, we go to the next page, of course, uh, and uh, we see uh, another collection. We're on page five now of 10, um, and we scroll across there. Now, bearing in mind that that last type I showed you was listed in the paper, see, occurrence again, was listed in the Zootaxa paper, as 155267, as an animal, that as a body, they had actually examined. Anyway, we go to the, back to our list, just for completeness sake. We'll try to get to 10 before my battery dies on this um, machine. We go to number 10. We got them listed as occurrences again, and we scroll back over, and there's another collection from the same place, of course, all the different numbers. Uh, that's... Uh, page uh, six of 10, see that are all occurrence records. Um, we go to page seven of 10, and we have a, another collection here, all listed as occurrence again. Oh, I hit eight of 10, we'll go back so you can just double check that they're um, at the right place. I'll scroll that over, uh, that's your seven of 10. You see all the animals and numbers, go back here, eight of 10, uh, where animals, numbers, uh, all at the same place, of course, Florida Museum Natural History. Um, shoot across here, and you've got it again. Now, I must uh, mention here, uh, that's not to say every person at this institution is uh, up to no good. This could all be the act of one person, uh, and we don't know who that person is, and everything else may follow. It could be a conspiracy involving more than one. It could be just one. All I know is that an act of fraud has been committed. Page 9, Occurrence. And we get to the last page, which is the last of 150 animals. And we have a whole stack of them here uh, listed as occurrence. Um, and, of course, uh, it does get quite interesting here. Again, they're all occurrences. You see some of the names of the collectors. Paul Moller, he's listed as one of the authors in that uh, scandalous paper. But we'll come to that at another time and a place. Anyway, uh, what I'm showing you here is, we go back to the Zootaxa paper, 
that what I'm telling you now is that all these numbers have just flown past us on that database as swimming in rivers or wherever they happen to be, but not animals in jars. So here they have listed all these animals. Now, of course, UF is their acronym. Uh, so the earlier numbers are not part of it, but in each group, they seem to be the last of the uh, groups or they tend to be most of the last. I'm looking here. No, the Western lineage is none from there, but certainly in the central and the eastern, uh, eastern group, there's a lot of specimens there. We're talking a sizable quantity from the University of Florida, none of which are listed as even existing as animals on that database because they are now listed as merely occurrence records. Now, to give it in perspective, this is a facility that's been operating for many years, has a vast collection, and if you were to take this database on face value as it's been recently amended, you would be led to believe that the University of Florida does not have in its possession a single preserved specimen of alligator snapping turtles, because according to that database, there are none. They are all now supposedly uh, location records. Now you can see that some of the authors are at this facility in this paper. There's, it's quite often with these collaborating papers, you only have one person uh, uh, who writes it and the rest put their name to it. But in this case, we have the lead author, Mr. Thomas, at the, various, at the re relevant facility where all the animals have now been de 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 apparently vanished. Uh, but of course, as I said, they couldn't uh, uh, commit the perfect crime because they listed one of the animals uh, in their uh, paper, uh, one of my type specimens, 155267. Therefore, we know that their whole, and based on the other aspects that have happened as well, the fact that these are all contradictory uh, statements. Each one of those numbers co contradicts that database that they've amended. We know that there has been a serious case of scientific fraud. What that means in simple terms is their scientific names are in fact null and void, not because of the fraud, but because they are junior synonyms of that and that. Thank you for your time.